light. And this light, Allah says, is used to guide mankind from the darknesses of ignorance to the light of knowledge, from the darknesses of worshipping other than Allah to the light of worshipping Allah alone, the light of Tawheed. Likewise, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam described the status of the Qur'an and the blessings of those who recite it and act upon it in numerous ahadith. And it would take us many, many hours to narrate all of these ahadith. And in fact, many of the classical scholars of Islam wrote treatises only on this particular subject, the subject of the blessings of the Qur'an as described by the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. And of the most succinct hadith in this regard is the hadith in Bukhari, in which the Prophet wasallam said, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهُ The best of you, the best amongst you, are those who first they learn the Qur'an and then they teach it to others. They learn the Qur'an and then they teach it to others. Likewise, the Prophet ﷺ told us, this book, the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will use it to raise up some people, i.e. into Jannah and to lower and debase others, i.e. into the fire of hell. So the Prophet ﷺ told us the Qur'an will be used to raise up some people and lower others. In another hadith, in a very similar meaning, the Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Qur'anu hujjatu laka aw alayk. That the Qur'an will be used as an evidence for you on the Day of Judgment, or it will be used as an evidence against you on the Day of Judgment. There is no middle ground. The Qur'an is either for you or against you. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the Qur'an for us on the Day of Judgment. In a beautiful hadith, the Prophet ﷺ also said, Abshiru, be happy, rejoice. For verily, this Qur'an that you have, one part of it, it is as if it is in your hands. And the other part, it is as if it is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a direct link between you and Allah. So the Prophet ﷺ said, hold on to it fast, means strongly, for you will never be misguided, you will never be destroyed if you hold on to it. Likewise, the Prophet ﷺ told us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen certain people on this earth. He has blessed certain people on this earth. And the people that he has blessed, the Prophet ﷺ said, they are the Ahlul Qur'ani wa khasatuhu. They are the people of the Qur'an and the privileged people who have understood and memorized it. The Prophet ﷺ also told us of a very beautiful parable, a very beautiful metaphor. And he said that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given an example for you to think about. And that example is that of a man on a road. And he is going straight on this road. And there are curtains on the side of this road which have chambers and doors. And sometimes he wants to lift that curtain and go away from the road. But a voice at the top of the road, at the head of the road, tells him, do not lift the curtains, come straight forward. And the Prophet ﷺ explained the hadith and he said, this road is the Sirat al-Mustaqim, the straight path that leads to Jannah. And these chambers with covers on them are the limits of Allah that you're not allowed to go into, that which is prohibited in our religion. And the voice at the top of the road, the voice at the end of the road is the Qur'an guiding you straight forward. The Qur'an is telling you, come. So if you listen to the Qur'an, you will not go right and left, you will go straight. And as you go straight, that will cause you to enter Jannah. And so the Prophet ﷺ strongly encouraged us to read the Qur'an and memorize the Qur'an and understand the Qur'an. He said that on the Day of Judgment, the Qur'an will come and testify for you on your behalf and his testimony will be accepted. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever puts the Qur'an in front of him, meaning as his guide, then the Qur'an will lead him to Jannah. And whoever throws it behind him, meaning he ignores the Qur'an, then the Qur'an will drag him to the fire of hell. And the Prophet ﷺ also said, I am commanding you to, to recite the Qur'an, for verily you will be recited for every word that you read. And I'm not saying that alif, lam, mim counts as one word. Rather, alif counts as a word, and lam counts as a word, and mim counts as a word. Whatever recitation you do, the Qur'an will reward you. Allah Azza wa Jalla will reward you for reciting the Qur'an. And in a very beautiful hadith that really encourages us to memorize the Qur'an, the Prophet ﷺ said, the person who is 
a companion of the Qur'an, means he always recites the Qur'an and acts upon it and believes in it. The person who is the sahib of the Qur'an, means he's always with the Qur'an, will be brought on the Day of Judgment, and he will be told, recite. And as he recites, he will go higher and higher and higher, until he has recited all that he knows of the Qur'an. In one version, it says, he will be told to recite as you used to recite in this world. And he will continue to recite as he used to recite in this world until his place in Jannah is equivalent to the amount of Qur'an inside of him. The more he's memorized, the higher his place in Jannah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, such as the Book of Allah, as described by the Qur'an and as described by the Sunnah, should we not memorize it? Should we not recite it? Should we not ponder over it? Should we not believe in it? With this, we come to the conclusion of today's episode. I hope to see you next time. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah nazzala ahsan al hadith kitaban mutashabiha. Kitaban mutashabiha mathaniyat qashairu min hujulud al-lazina yakhshawun rabbahum. ثم تلين جلودهم وقلوبهم إلى ذكر الله